corporate America has become obsessed with company culture. But those Friday afternoon drinks and team building days are papering over a terrible trend which is making your workplace miserable and stalling your career. I really mean the entire Apple team. You know, I can go out in a retail store and the retail teams. Together, we can finally put people at the center of our technology. Operating in a clean, fast-paced, friendly environment. A team full of people just like you. Company culture is one of the biggest trends in corporate management. Small companies with as few as 20 employees are hiring culture managers whose full-time job is to promote a collaborative and positive work environment. These are full-time employees that from a bottom line business perspective do nothing but make the other 19 employees more engaged with their work. Culture is what keeps people around. According to a survey of job seekers and hiring managers conducted by Robert Half, a workforce analytics firm, 91% of managers said that a candidate's fit with the organizational culture was more important than their skills and experience. Hilariously, a PwC survey on company culture found that 69% of companies believed that their culture gave them a competitive edge. Presumably, the other 31% of companies realized that an office didn't need a ping pong table and kombucha on tap to be a nice place to work. Managing corporate culture is expensive. Corporate culture managers are earning an average salary package of $110,000 a year according to Glassdoor. Direct salary expenses also don't capture the additional costs of running culture events and the lost man hours in the name of team building. It's a big investment and one that is not paying off. Most workers report only engaging in workplace team activities because they felt they had to. They said that they would rather spend their hours at work, focus on their job tasks, and after work hours with family and friends or catching up on personal errands. None of us at work like it when some person in HR comes and says, hey guys, we're doing this fun activity from X time to X time and you had no say in the matter, but you have to go. And I think we can all agree that this is terrible. Even when activities were funded by the company, most workers said that they did not enjoy what they called corporate prescribed mandatory fun. An article in the Harvard Business Review found that these types of business environments were one of the main reasons that top performing employees left the business. So why the f companies still obsessed with their culture if it's so expensive to maintain and only makes employees want to quit? Well, there are actually four reasons, and each one is worse than the last. The first reason is that companies don't want to create a company culture. They want to create a company cult. Management at large companies has discovered that they can build an undue level of control over their employees if they control their thinking and behavior in the workplace. Senior management will push the narrative that the company stands for something greater than generating an acceptable rate of return to its shareholders. But that's exactly what it is. It's a business of people serving people. And it was, is, and always will be about the culture of the company. Startups are prone to do this with overly enthusiastic founders that think they are going to change the world. But the Harvard Business Review found again that cult-like behaviors were most common in the largest companies. Apple, Tesla, Nordstrom, and Harley-Davidson were the examples their report gave. Ritualistic behavior is a common characteristic of cults and companies that take their culture too far. We have a lot of companies that really brag about their culture. It's on their website. There's even one company uh, in town, I won't mention their name, but uh, will pay their employees $2,000 if they tattoo sort of the company culture on their bodies. Not a joke, 2,000 bucks. It is still mandatory for Walmart employees to recite the company cheer once a day in all of their stores around the country. According to the company, Sam Walton, the company's founder, toured a Korean tennis ball factory in 1975 that started every day with a company chant. Walton, who was obsessed with Asian business culture, liked the idea so much that he made it mandatory in all of his stores. One thing that attracted Walton to businesses in the East was the utter devotion that employees have for their company and its founders. Employees routinely put in twice their salaried hours to impress rigid corporate leadership, a trend that business owners back in America were keen to replicate. Sam Walton's daily chant may be a cup full of concentrated cringe, but other companies take it a step further by employing another tactic of cults, language control. When employees start working at Disney theme parks, they are given a language guide. When you get a job with the Walt Disney Company, it's not just getting a job, it's like entering a new community. I would have already been fired, because there are no employees at Disney parks. There are only cast members, and there are no customers, only guests. And employees are not at work, they are on stage. Employees are reprimanded from going off script. Disney knows that controlling the language their employees use will get them to put in extra effort around their parks. Disney is not alone. Google employees call themselves Googlers, unless they have just joined, and then they are Nooglers. 
Amazon employees are Amazonians, and Facebook employees are MetaMates. It sounds harmless, and some people might even call it good management, but it's still mental conditioning with an objective. What's even scarier is that it works. I'm sure that you can think of a lot of jargon terms and acronyms unique to your company. Language and rituals are a big part of any culture, but in corporatism, their aim is to get employees to think of the company and their job as something bigger than just a place they go to do tasks to earn money. For folks who want to be part of something bigger than themselves. A workforce that thinks their company is more important than the compensation that it provides will accept lower salaries and remain more loyal than they would to a company that doesn't pull the same tricks. Google's corporate culture is legendary for free salad bars and encouraging creativity, but that's only in place to get Googlers to stay in the office longer and share their best ideas with a trillion dollar company. Goldman Sachs's culture is to be home of the smartest, hardest working people that want to get paid more than everyone else for being better than everyone else. But that culture lets them work their new analysts 80 hours a week a month straight because they know the culture they were signing up for. If corporate culture is starting to sound less like an annoying business buzzword and more like a horrifying trend, that was only the first reason of four. So it's time to learn how money works to find out why corporate America has become obsessed with company culture. This week's lesson was sponsored by Incogni. Unbeknownst to you, it is highly likely that your personal data is being traded on the internet without your knowledge or consent. Alarmingly, in 2021, privacy breaches experienced a 68% increase compared to the previous year. On a positive note, you have the right to safeguard your privacy by asking data brokers to delete any information they possess about you. However, the downside is that accomplishing this manually can take years. When they possess your personal information, data brokers expose you to the danger of their database being hacked, thus jeopardizing your privacy. Thankfully, Incogni is at your service. Incogni liaises with the data brokers for you, demanding a removal of your personal data and addressing any objections they may have. The process is incredibly straightforward. Simply create an account, identify whose data needs to be removed, authorize Incogni to act on your behalf, and they will contact data brokers to request the removal of your personal data. It's as simple as that. Entrust Incogni with the task of safeguarding your privacy and enjoy peace of mind knowing that your personal information isn't circulating on the web. The icing on the cake is that Incogni offers a risk-free 30-day trial, allowing you to test the service and receive a full refund if it doesn't meet your expectations. Sign up for Incogni at incogni.com forward slash money. The first 100 people to use code money with this link will get 60% off Incogni. The second reason that companies have become so obsessed with their culture is because pushback over workplace issues has become a lot more serious. Offices have become a lot more diverse and inclusive, and public opinion has shifted to support groups that previously would have been marginalized. This is positive progress, but it's not without challenges. When everybody in an office has a similar background, it's easier to avoid faux pas that will get the company in trouble. In a modern office, what is just a joke to one person will be an attack to another person. Really uncomfortable, man. Whoa, Kayla, slow down, Speedy. <laughs> I can't wait to see us in my bedroom later. And if you got time, why don't you swing by my bedroom? I will see whose you can get done first. Mine's bigger. Stop. Mine's bigger. You boys are gonna stretch me thin. Okay, what the f This is literally sexual harassment, okay? Like, how are you okay with this, Kayla? I'm remodeling Rob's bedroom later. When I'm not here, I run a small interior design company. The court of public opinion is very unkind to companies no matter how they handle these situations. Having a strong cultural framework in place can help reduce the chances of these events happening. Stopping bad PR and getting the most work out of the widest possible pool of talent is all the companies really care about, but that sounds too dehumanizing, so they brand it as corporate culture and everybody is happy. A company that makes a big deal about its corporate culture can also use it as a defense when problems do eventually occur. Any corporate apology is bound to include a line about how the company takes workplace culture very seriously and it holds its people to the highest standards of whatever. This isn't a bad thing. A workplace should be somewhere everybody feels comfortable, even if it's a little more rigid than the 1950s style Mad Men ad firm. But don't be fooled into thinking it's been done for the right reasons. A culture is only good as how much extra profit it can make for a company every year. The third reason that companies have become so obsessed with corporate culture is because everybody else is doing it and they've all convinced each other it's important. Corporate culture has been a concept in business management since the 1970s, but it has only become a buzzword in the last 10 years. The obsession with company culture began when company leaders saw the success of tech startups, and they had a very different way of doing business, but were becoming the most valuable businesses in the world. The push for positive company culture really became about chasing what worked for others. The objective of creating the best possible working environment got lost to following trends and fads that were implemented poorly. 
and now the new thing in Silicon Valley, and he's going to use this lot, which is like, I like to hire people that I want to go have a beer with. It's like, well, that's a really stupid reason to hire someone. Office cubicles were once the definition of a depressing work environment, but now they look like heaven. Anybody that has worked in a culture-centric, collaboration-focused, open-plan office knows that it really means that you'll be working shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with your coworkers on a small desk barely big enough for all of your stuff. This is where I work. Uh, my desk is incredibly close to my poor neighbors. I always have to wear headphones to concentrate, and nobody ever talks. The old office cubicles were better for workers, but moving to the conveniently cheaper option of cramming more staff into the same square footage can be justified by management with a focus on promoting company culture. Open offices are about saving money. The extra space is used for rec rooms that look great on the company's career landing page, but workers will get into trouble for using if they don't meet their performance objectives. In the age of culture obsession, a team isn't a group of overworked people who drink heavily to cope with stress. They just work hard, play hard. The employees share blame in this obsession as well. One of the most frequently recommended interview questions for applicants is to ask about company culture. 91% of hiring managers rank a good cultural fit over the applicant with the best skills, so this is good advice. But the interviewers then need a good answer. If they said that they are a boring company that sets reasonable expectation for their workers and realizes that their accounting department is not a fast-paced and dynamic environment, it would put off a lot of LinkedIn enthusiasts. The best strategy for both workers and employers is to play along with the game and pretend they care. Company culture can be good for everybody, but not if it goes too far. And it can actually hurt company and career success in three ways. The first problem is that it can recreate an environment where everybody is the same, even if individualism is what it was trying to promote. Sometimes good ideas are had when not everybody feels 100% comfortable. And if everybody is too in line with the homogenous culture, there won't be anybody to challenge bad ideas. Companies with strong cultures can also isolate new employees and make them feel very awkward. I am sure you have all talked to someone that was just a little bit too into their company. And just love, just love my job. Now imagine working with a whole team of them. It is also a lot of pressure. Most of the stuff you do at your job does not matter. If you file a report late or enter some date wrong, it won't be the end of the world. But if you and all of the people you work with believe that the company is more important than just something that pays your bills, then every little mistake becomes the end of the world. This is terrible for the mental health of employees, but it's also terrible for the company because it disincentivizes free thinking and controlled risk taking. First thing I do is ask for it. I'm just calling you out, corporate America, you the fourth reason that companies have become obsessed with corporate culture is because it's one of the last options they have to motivate staff that just don't care about the 40-year careers anymore. To find out why, go and watch my video on how careers have changed forever. A special thanks again to Incogni for making it possible for everybody to keep on learning how money works. You know what my value is if I had a company? It'd be like, get this shit done, and I don't care what you do in the meantime, just like, you know, don't be a dick. That's it. That's like, that's all your company values need to be.